Well, hello, everybody. I'm Dr. Michael Grossman. I'm Dr. Barbara Grossman. It's a pleasure to be talking with you today. Uh, we are the authors of The Marriage Map, The Road to Transforming Your Marriage from Ordeal to Adventure. And we're here on Facebook Live to talk to you all about some different topics related to intimate romantic relationships. Today, we thought we'd, uh, we thought we'd talk about getting past the hurt. So inevitably in a romantic relationship, in a long-term marriage, a long-term romantic relationship, there are difficulties that you will, that you will have. And that is something to talk about and share with you today. So why would that be so? Why would there be so much uh, inevitable conflict? Go ahead. It's mostly because uh, we're different. We're individuals and we have different personal histories. We have um, different um, temperaments. We have different um, personal goals. We have different ideas about how life should be. It comes out of our own personal philosophy. And so inevitably we, we, um, we run into um, those differences and it creates tension. And um, what happens for most of us when we come out of the period of a relationship where we're emphasizing our affinity and our connection with each other, there's a long period where more than likely one or both of you are going to be inclined to be accommodating and to get along uh, and, uh, and smooth over the differences. And so um, when most couples uh, start to deal with their conflicts, they're not dealing with just one conflict, they're dealing with a lot of conflicts. And so it's hard to speak calmly and rationally and present your point of view and listen without defending yourself. And so um, because, the, because it's inevitable that this occurs, um, it's important that we consciously learn skills in order topics and there's lots of topics to talk about we need to talk about um, how who pays bills and who makes money and who um, and how much time do you spend with family and how much personal time you have how much together time you have uh, you, you want to deal with um, uh, boundaries with other people um, how, how much friendliness or flirting is okay and where is the boundary line uh, there's just uh, so, so many issues that come up over time, and we need to learn how to talk about that and negotiate what is comfortable for each of you so that you both can feel comfortable and connected no matter what's happening in your lives. And um, one of the things we do for our couples is to teach um, how you have these conversations, because it's really important that you listen without defending yourself and that you um, allow your partner to say their point of view. And you, you know, over time, when you practice these skills, you begin to really utilize this time and you begin to see each other, see yourself through your partner's eyes, which is very, very interesting. Um, and you get to share yourself. You get to um, really go deeply and understand your feelings, what you want, what you don't want, and perhaps even why that's so. And, um, and then you, we teach you how to make requests of each other so that you can learn to negotiate what works for both of you. And that way you can partner through life um, comfortably and stay connected. So what we want you to know is that these, these um, uh, uh, difficult interactions are inevitable in a long-term romantic relationship. It is going to happen. And don't think that you should replace your partner because now I'm not happy with them because they are um, not so easy to be with now and that they're not, um, they're not um, easy and comfortable. It, 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 a relationship is designed to be difficult. It's designed to stretch you. It's designed to move you into a more expanded layer of living. And this is inevitable. It's going to happen. When you're two years old, you have certain disagreements with your mother. She does not cooperate. She used to just give you whatever you wanted when you were really little, but now she's got all these rules. You move later to when you're six or 10 and, and you find that, oh, well, I'm part of the family. I've learned to adapt 
to how it's supposed to be. And, and it's working pretty good. We 13 and 14 and all of a sudden it's not any good anymore. But it's not like there's a problem with the family. It's not like there's something wrong happening. You're growing and changing. Who you were is no longer working for you. You want to be different. And then that interferes with all your loving relationships. That happens in romantic relationship too. You get to be 25 and 30 and it was working well and you're 35 and 40 and now it's not working. It is inevitable. This is not a surprise and there's nothing wrong, but it takes, as Dr. Barber described, skills to be able to get to where you want to be in terms of maintaining intimacy, maintaining that closeness. So when you're, what are the times when you're likely to form a relationship? You might be in your 20s when you're really interested in belonging and connecting and creating a family. Um, uh, so you, you create that relationship and you're connected and things, you, things go well for a period of time. And then you get to a place where you want to explore your individual self-expression, where you want to um, f create a business or um, uh, do some entrepreneurial um, creative adventure um, that represents your own personal uh, creativity. So you're focused on yourself and you're focused on um, strategy, you're focused on your own project. It's not, it's, it's kind of a thinking time because you have a lot of goals to accomplish. So during that time, and you might even have children during that time. So it takes a lot of organizing and managing time and schedules. And so uh, the late twenties and thirties, even forties, depending on when you have your children is, is a time of a lot of busyness and a lot of juggling both schedules and, and making everything happen, plus your own creative projects. So this is a time when you're inclined to be in your head, not in your heart. And so, um, and so it's, it, that's a time where, you know, partners often get into a position of being really focused on their own needs, their own feelings. And there's a, there's a certain power struggle or conflict that um, develops uh, during that period that um, can be eased by learning how to grow your heart. Because it's important inevitably to grow both your mind and your heart. It's great to fulfill on your creative accomplishments, your goals and dreams for your, for your contribution to society, but it's also important to grow your heart so that you can hear the people that you love, hear your partner, understand their point of view. What's fascinating about a conflict, um, and I challenge conflict, both of you are right. Uh, and, um, and as a matter of really listening for the valid validity of each of your positions and then working out what works for both of you. And um, it's, so, it's so easy to get caught in your own point of view about how you're right and how your partner is wrong. Um, but it really ultimately doesn't look like that when you see the conversation through, if you have the skills to see the conversation through and understand the rightness of both of you. And we can say that the experience of who you are changes over a lifetime. And we're going to spend more time in our next uh, Facebook Live next week talking about the way you see life differently as you begin to grow and develop. And the growth and development is encouraged by your partner's differences. When your partner stretches you to understand their point of view, which is very different than your point of view, thing, because you need to be stretched. You need to see the world from a bigger perspective than just my personal perspective. And spiritual, emotional, um, individual growth is necessary and pushed by that relationship you have with your significant other. And it's a very precious experience being pushed and stretched to see the world in a bigger way. And we do that for each other. And that's why we picked each other. We actually pick our partner because they, we knew that they could stretch us in the way we need to be stretched, as well as heal us in the way we need to be healed. So those are some thoughts about getting past the hurt and I will add just one thought about that. When we share our hurts with our partner, it's very helpful to share the past, how it makes us feel, 
when our partner behaves and does this and that and makes us feel like, well, once again, six, 10, 12 years old. And when we had this and that happened to us and it created this pain and difficulty and it reminds us of that, it pushes us back into that. And then we can make a request of our partner, please, can you please be sensitive to my injury? And we make a specific request, not a general request just to be nice, but a specific request that can we, if we were a movie camera, could we, instead of that, could we behave in this way instead of that way? And very specific requests, not general, not be nice. Be nice doesn't really make it. You gotta be very specific. But that's a very helpful kind of perspective to have when we're dealing with hurts. So if you can catch your hurts uh, quickly and talk about it before you're um, overwhelmed with emotions, that's um, ideal. And if you can start sharing what you feel are your differences early and not wait until you have uh, a um, year's worth of, of hurts that turn into resentment, that's even better. We want you to um, not be burdened by um, a um, overwhelming landslide of hurts. If you can talk from the, the specific hurt that you're experiencing right now and share your innermost feelings, and uh, and refer to how it connects with your past and ask for what you want. That is the way to make this the easiest possible uh, procedure. And um, if you have, if if that's not your situation, uh, it's very possible that uh, you need support and help to to share your feelings so that you're destructive in your relationship. Because um, you know how you respond to your partner's uh, hurts is very, very crucial to the future bond in your relationship. You, you want to be able to hear hurts and you want to be able to share hurts and respect what you're hearing and feel respected when you're sharing. And if, you, if your inclination is, is to respond with defense or rationalization or uh, any kind of, of um, disgust, <laughs> Um, that's not going to wear well in your relationship. So uh, I'm ha we're happy to support you in learning how to, to resolve your hurts and learn what works in your relationship so that you can feel respected and loved in your partnership. And so we're inviting you, if you would like to get more information, we're inviting you to be a part of our class. We're going to do a four-week class on Sunday starting September 15th at 6 o'clock time and you could be part of our class where we actually teach the skills that we're talking about so it's not just an intellectual idea but it's actual practice where you learn just like you're an ice skater or a basketball player you're learning the skills you know you got to throw the ball in the basket but to be skilled in doing that give you all these great things to do but you want to be skilled in doing that we teach you the skills it's really really a, a, a very profound experience so Go on our website, themarriagemap.com. You can sign up for our classes and we're happy to um, uh, see you there. And we're gonna be back next week. We're gonna talk some more about things and we're gonna talk about how you see life differently over the different stages of, of growth uh, over a lifetime. And we're gonna talk about that and we'll be with you next week. It's a real pleasure. Wishing you love.